So you've designed your network, you've determined how many access points you need, where you need to place them, where you need to mount them, whether you need any directional antennas or not, and now it comes to the point where you need to connect those access points to the network and get them talking to Extreme Cloud IQ. So how does that happen? Every access point or every Extreme Wireless Cloud access point comes pre-configured with a mechanism that will call to redirector.extremecloudiq.com. So it will invoke a request to that URL and it will introduce itself with its serial number. And then a service called redirector that's part of our private cloud deployment will look at that serial number and match the serial number with the customer it belongs to and redirect it to the correct RDC, or original data center, and within the regional data center, there's an entity called virtual IQ, or a virtual Extreme Cloud IQ instance, um, and that's what the access point, or switch, or branch router will attach itself to, and that maps it to a customer instance. So the most important here, uh, thing here to remember is, when you deploy that access point, it will need to obtain an IP address, preferably for a DHCP service, it will need to have a default gateway configured, again, preferably for a DHCP server, a DNS server configured, preferably for a DHCP server, although we do use our own public DNS servers as a fallback. And from a firewall perspective, it will need to be able to talk um, through CapWeb, a protocol we use for communication between the device and Extreme Cloud IQ, or, as a fallback scenario, HTTP protocol. So, the devices either use CapWeb, uh, control and provision of wireless access points portfolio, uh, protocol to talk to Extreme Cloud IQ, or they fall back to HTTP uh, as a protocol of rest resort. Uh, and it all happens out of the box. So, all of the devices come pre-configured with that mechanism. So, uh, when you plug them in, they will as long as they get an IP address, a default gateway, and a DNS server, they will then try to contact redirector.extremecloudiq.com. And it's up to you to then enter the serial numbers of those APs into your Extreme Cloud IQ account. And if that happens, then the redirector will show the access points where to go, which is your closest RDC. And within that RDC, the access points will attach themselves to the virtual IQ instance. And that is how you get access points to your Extreme Cloud IQ instance, and that's how you get access points uh, onboarded onto the Extreme Cloud IQ platform, so you can configure them and provision them uh, going forward. Let's look at the redirector workflow in some more detail. So, the redirector, the URL, or the fully qualified domain name of the redirector is pre-configured in the firmware. You don't have to worry about it. Um, we said that the access point needs to get its IP address from a DHCP server, its default gate from a DHCP server, or and the DNS um, server from the DHCP server as well. Again, this can be manually configured if this is something that you want, because each of the access points has a fully blown CLI. But in order to scale, in order to make this as simple as possible, uh, the best practice would be to use DHCP on that management uh, VLAN where you're attaching your access points to. Now, in terms of VLANs, the access points come with the management interface mapped to a native VLAN. So whatever your native VLAN on the switch is, that's going to be your management VLAN for that AP when you plug it in and uh, deploy it to your network until such time as you reconfigure that. But by default, native VLAN matches management VLAN which is reconfigurable later if that is what you want. So the access point gets its IP settings, starts talking to the redirector, finds out where it needs to go in terms of the RDCs, in terms of the VIQ instances, and then it attaches itself to something we call a CapWeb server. So each RDC is going to have CapWeb master servers, and those will then further redirect the AP to the CapWeb server, the actual CapWeb server that will terminate the tunnel, or the CapWeb tunnel. And that CapWeb tunnel is used for two things. It's used to push configuration from the Extreme Cloud IQ platform down to the AP, 
and it's also used to send monitoring data from the AP up to the Extreme Cloud IQ instance. So it's a bi-directional communication, but the tunnel is established from the direction of the access point of the device to the Extreme Cloud IQ instance, which makes it very simple to traverse things like NAT and firewalls. You don't have to worry about uh, network address translation and so on. So the AP is the one that establishes this communication. It's the, the AP is the one that establishes this tunnel. And in terms of uh, communication, it's all done through a protocol called CAPWEP. Uh, control and provisioning of wireless access points is the name of the protocol, and it uses by default a UDP port 12222. Let's look at some of the protocols used in Extreme Cloud IQ deployment or Extreme Wireless Cloud deployment. We talked about cooperative control protocols before. Those are all done locally between the access points. Uh, and since it's all done on layer two subnet uh, or across the wireless uh, communication using the beacon frames, there's no need to configure anything in terms of firewalls. You don't need to open up any ports. Uh, in case you were wondering, the cooperative control protocols use port 3000 to communicate with one another. If for some reason you have a weird layer two firewall uh, between those access points. In terms of access points to extreme cloud IQ communication, we are talking about, well, we're talking about management traffic. And the first thing that needs to be open between the AP and the extreme cloud IQ platform is UDP port 12222, which is the CAPWEB protocol. We do implement a fallback mechanism to TCP port 80. And the reason why we have that fallback mechanism is because this is probably the most common port that's going to be open on all firewalls. Uh, on the outward direction. However, please note that some of the newer firewalls or uh, NG next generation firewalls will detect that the payload of that traf the payload of that communication is actually not HTTP but CAPWEB and will often drop the traffic. So as a best practice, we will always encourage to use the CAPWEB protocol and open the CAPWEB protocol in the outbound direction from the management VLAN of the access points towards Extreme Cloud IQ. If you need to find out the IP addresses of your RDC, those can be found on the uh, Extreme Cloud IQ platform about page. So you'll be able to, within the product, find out the fully qualified domain names uh, that you need to open up on your firewall for communication to your specific RDC instance. The second protocol that needs to be enabled if you're using private pre-shared key solution is called RATSEC, which is basically encrypted radius communication or radius over TLS. That is TCP port 2083 and it's only needed if you implement PPSK with cloud-based authentication. We will talk about that further in the class, um, but just note if you use PPSK with cloud-based credentials, you will need another port, which is RATSEC or TCP 2083. For firmware upgrades and file transfers, you will need port TCP 443, and you will also need this port for switch management, because uh, cloud-enabled switches don't support CAPWEB. They use SSL or TCP port 4. 143 for communication with Extreme Cloud IQ. They don't use CapWeb. So uh, as a further resource, we have a firewall configuration guide which is shared with you as part of the additional resources. Uh, if you need further information on how you configure your firewall, which protocols to support, which direction they need to go, uh, please look at our uh, firewall configuration guide.